A few years ago, I had the opportunity to become more involved in my children's elementary school. I joined the parent-teacher organization and became an active volunteer in the classroom during the day. I was so excited for these new opportunities I had to serve. And I shared it with my family the next time we were gathered together. My brother-in-law, after hearing about my new responsibilities, laughed. And he called me a cupcake mom. <laughs> a mom whose only job as a parent volunteer is to bring cupcakes into the classroom on special occasions. I stopped him right there because he doesn't know my city and he doesn't know the needs of my district. I deeply love my city with its strong history of innovation and resilience. But the reality is, is that it has a poverty rate of 35%. It has a median household income of less than $30,000 a year. And it has one of the highest opioid overdose rates in the nation. It is a city where major factories and good paying jobs have left. And the effects of segregation and desegregation still reverberate throughout the community. It is a city where many parents opt out of the public school system and send their children to private or charter schools. My children go to a school district with some of the lowest test scores in the state. But it's not because the teachers can't teach or the children are incapable of learning. Let me ask all of you something right now. By show of hands, how many of you were able to eat three meals yesterday? How many of you were able to put your children to bed because you weren't working a second or third job? How many of you have running water at home When we talk about urban education, we're actually talking about the larger social system that surrounds an urban district. We're talking about the cycle of poverty. We're talking about the lack of access to health care, the social, emotional, and cognitive barriers to education. We're talking about communities like mine that suffer from being the fourth largest food desert in the nation and the trauma that comes from economic hardship. By teaching kids math and science, we're also trying to break the cycle of poverty. And we know that without parent involvement, we're much less likely to do so. When I truly understood the realities of urban education, I knew that I wanted to advocate for other parents in my district. I knew that I needed to be the voice and amplify the voices of others in my city for those who don't have access to reliable transportation, to those who are fighting chronic illness or opioid addiction, I decided to run for and successfully won a seat on the school board so I could be that voice and do my part to increase parent involvement. We know that parent involvement in all forms has a positive effect on academic success. We know that regardless of their own education level or socioeconomic status, all parents have the ability to improve their child's success by being involved in their lives. Because guess what? To an extent, it doesn't matter how good the teachers are. 
It doesn't matter how much devotion and love they put into those classrooms or planning periods. They can't do it without us parents. Teachers can't fully do their jobs if we as parents don't teach our children to question the world around them. How to recognize colors, shapes, numbers, and letters on billboards and cereal boxes before they get to kindergarten. Teachers can't fully do their jobs if we don't celebrate our children's successes and help them overcome obstacles. They can't do their jobs if we're not checking on homework, asking about the science fair project, asking about the math test. They can't fully do their jobs if we don't recognize our role as the teacher at home and support the work, the very real and very hard work that they do in the classroom every single day. I truly believe that most parents care deeply about their children's education, and they are doing their best to love and provide for their children. But I've met parents who are worried that they are failing their children because they're not meeting the stereotype of what an engaged parent is. They know that education can be the lifeline out of poverty, but they don't have the time or financial resources to volunteer in the classroom or go to the evening meetings. To those parents, I want you to know the most effective method of parent engagement is easier than you may realize. It is connecting with your child whenever you have time, asking them about their day, whether it's in the morning or afternoon or evening or weekends. It is connecting with them and being genuinely interested in what their lives are like, what their interests are, who their teachers are. Parent involvement is good parenting in action, something parents are already capable of doing. It is taking a genuine interest in their lives and modeling an attitude that school is interesting and important work. But the responsibility for parent engagement lies also with districts, administrations, and schools. Too many times I've heard from parents that they don't even feel welcome in their children's school buildings. How can we possibly expect parents to become fully engaged in their children's education if we don't do everything in our power to make them feel welcome the second they walk into that building? It is the responsibility of schools and districts to foster a warm and welcoming environment to students and parents alike. It is the responsibility of schools and districts to have regular communication between teachers and parents, to have open houses and events in the schools throughout the year. It is the responsibility of schools and districts to have after-school activities and parent workshops where they can learn more about how and what their children are learning. They can have their own volunteer opportunities. And they can become more invested in their children's educational community. We also need to challenge what the idea of a cupcake mom is. My brother-in-law was joking but his remark cut me. It reduced my worth from a parent volunteer to a stereotype of womanhood and domesticity. Because when we talk about parent volunteers, we're usually talking about women. And we're talking about the underappreciated and unappreciated work of women. by reinforcing the gender bias of primary caregivers, we're also demeaning their value. 
we're also demeaning the value of fathers. Grandfathers, grandmothers, aunts, uncles, older siblings in a child's life. We're demeaning the value of a single parent working two or three jobs where perhaps the best thing that they can do in one day is just get their child to school on time. Parent involvement is about building a community around our children in their home and in their school. It is about connecting educators and parents and students in the belief that learning can draw us together, help us break the cycle of poverty, and build a community where everyone is valued and has a purpose. And sometimes we can do that with cupcakes. <laughs> <laughs>